Alrighty, morning everyone and welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on another beautiful day. I've got another unboxing for you and this time it's not a Rolex, it's an Omega. And it's actually one of my all-time favorite Omegas that is kind of sort of unfortunately not one that is really in demand right now. Which can also be a good thing because you can actually pick this watch up and probably even get a discount from your dealership. It depends on uh, how good your relationship with them is. So yeah, we're going to unbox this watch today. You're going to see in a moment what it is. Well, you probably also read the title, so you already know it. But um, yeah, it's a really beautiful watch. It's a watch that I will actually probably wear the most out of all the watches that I bought. And um, that's also due to the fact that you're not really losing value because it lost value already. So, yeah, that's a thing. But um, it's a very, very wearable watch, in my opinion. Um, it's a very sturdy watch and uh, also a very beautiful one indeed. So, we're going to unbox it today, go through all the different stuff that comes with the watch, everything that you get uh, when you buy this watch, and also a little bit more. Um, but, um, yeah, we're going to go through that and uh, I would say we'll just get into it. How about that? So, you've got this beautiful white Omega um, box here, this like sleeve thingy, and inside you've got a even more beautiful uh, lacquer finished um, wooden box, which looks like, well, wood, I guess. I, I don't really know my woods, so I would say this is a wooden box. It is, however, a very beautiful one. You can already tell it's not a Speedmaster, it's a Seamaster, because the Speedmaster obviously comes in a different box. Not like any specific box. The Moonwatch obviously comes in this huge, um, like, massive box thingy, and then some of the special editions come in a more smaller box. But this is definitely the Seamaster box that most Seamasters come in. So, um, yeah, I actually really love this box. In my opinion, this is one of the um, best quality boxes that you can get with a, bo with a watch that is decently affordable. Um, this watch cost me 5,000 euros. Um, the listing price is uh, 5,300 euros. As I said, I got a little bit of a discount um, because, well, they just wanted to be a little nice to me, I guess. So let's first have a look at uh, the papers and everything that comes with this watch. Um, you obviously have your little Omega um, card holding thingy, which holds your international warranty, which I'm not going to pull out because there's personal information on there. Um, you've got your pictograms and your um, master the chronometer certification here let's see if we can yeah no okay it, it's just gonna stay in there okay uh, you can see the reference number on there someone is probably gonna be able to tell what kind of watch it is from the reference number but omega reference numbers is not really something that you can uh yeah learn really because they are like uh, whatever like 20 numbers long so yeah not even gonna bother um you've got your omega operating instructions which is a little book booklet thing it's more like a really book um it's more like a book really but uh, yeah you've got all the th the stuff that you want to you know know about the watch or the movement or like whatever in different languages and stuff like that it's not terribly interesting so we won't um bother with that very long so this goes back in here and what I have to say uh, about this box is that it's decently hard to get this out and into um, this box because this foam stuff, for some reason, sticks to this. It's not sticky at all, but it sticks to this lacquered finish like nothing else. And that is really annoying, but um, yeah, you can see that already. Like, I'm pulling on it, and it's just... It's not that important, right? It, it's about the watch. So, um, yeah, this goes over there. We don't need that right now. We need this. As I said, really beautiful wooden box. It's really high quality. Honestly, way higher quality than Rolex boxes, for example. Gotta be honest about that. I love Rolex. It's, it's my favorite brand at the moment. Um, just because, well, I, I'm not able to get an AP or a Patek at the moment. But, um, yeah, I, I just think these boxes are way higher quality. You even got this little push button thingy that is actually made out of metal. Um, and this actually does work. You cannot open the lid unless you push this thing, which I love, honestly, because it actually has a function. Um, it even have, uh, it even has uh, soft close, you can see right here. Like, come on, who does that for a watch that's five grand? That's crazy. They're really cool. They really thought about this box, and they really did a great job. So, yeah, enough about the box. You can see the watch right here. This is the Omega Seamaster Diver 300, so this watch is capable of surpassing the depth of 300 meters which is 
a decent depth, I would say. Um, not that I would really go to any place on the water that's that deep ever, but I still really love this watch, and um, nonetheless, it's gonna be a really, really good uh, daily wearable watch, kinda. You know what I mean, right? So, yeah, let's go into some of the um, specifications of this watch. So, it is a 42 millimeters. So like, we're not gonna go in depth of it. Um, I am gonna do a full review on this watch, but I'm just letting you know, you know, it's a 40 millimeter, uh, it's a 42 millimeter watch, so it is a pretty big watch. However, it wears pretty decently slim, actually. Uh, we can do that right here. I can actually put it on my wrist. Uh, you can also see it, it does have a transparent case back, which is really cool, uh, because I like to look at the movement. Uh, sometimes it is a, obviously a certified um, master chronometer, so yeah, very good. I'm gonna just here uh, open it up and put it on my wrist now, uh, because we obviously want to get a wrist shot of it, right? Would be a bit boring if we didn't. So um, yeah, I really like the rubber strap on this watch, actually. Uh, it's a really cool... Um, feature of it because I actually wanted a watch with a rubber strap. I did not have one, so now that I have one, it's actually like it's 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 really cool. And um it's a written yeah come on. Don't be incapable of putting it on now please. It's a really really useful strap actually uh, that you can do a lot with. So that is nice. Come on now. Okay, I wasn't really able to really fit it with my camera in the way, uh, but you know, you get an idea. It's, it's not a small watch, but it really does wear way more slim than, um, let's say, an Explorer, maybe? Maybe? Not really, honestly. Probably worries about the same as an Explorer. Um, it weighs, honestly, more slim than most Tudor watches, like the, uh, the 41 uh, millimeter Tudor watches. It wears more slim than them, um, also the 40 ones, and uh, yeah, I, I really like that. So that's a really cool thing, because I don't really like it when uh, a watch is like as big that you, you know, get caught on stuff and stuff like that. So this is, I like this, I really do like this. It's a really good fit for me, and it's also light. It doesn't really weigh a lot, because obviously it's on a rubber strap. Rubber straps don't really weigh a whole lot. Um, if it was on a bracelet, it would be a hefty watch. Probably would be similar to the weight of an Explorer 2. Um, but that's just something that's not really important. Um, if it's important to you, you know, um, just Google the weights. Yeah, It's not like something that is impossible to uh, figure out. But I really do think uh, that this is a good watch for a watch that you can wear on a daily basis. Um, because obviously it doesn't have a bracelet that can get scratched and uh, if you can take care of your watch a little bit you know you're not gonna really bang it up um i obviously would never suggest wearing a expensive watch if you're doing something uh, where it's likely that it's gonna get damaged so for example um if i put that on 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 my um situation i i am outside a lot do a lot of of work in the garden stuff like that um i wouldn't really wear a watch if i'm planning on cutting down trees or digging something up or something like that. It's just not very necessary, you know? The bracelet's not gonna get scratched because it's not a bracelet, um, but the, your watch could still scratch. I don't really care about that, but then again, um, it's not really something that you generally want to happen, I would say. At least I don't really feel the need to scratch up my watch without, yeah, any reason, really. So, yeah, just something to keep in mind, but I really think that's, that's, that this is a watch that you can wear on a daily basis, and you can do that very uh, well, and very comfortably, actually, because a rubber strap is actually, in my opinion, um, like, you know, maybe with, with the exception of some leather, leather straps, it's the most comfortable option for a strap slash bracelet. This watch does come with a bracelet, obviously, as I already said. It also comes with a blue dial, so if you want to have a completely blue watch, you can definitely have that uh, with this Omega. Um, it also comes in green, so you can have a green bezel, green dial, stuff like that. Uh, I'm not even sure if you can get a green rubber strap. Probably, right? If you can get the rest of it in green, probably also that. Um, you can also get it in uh, black, that is also possible. Uh, you can also have it with a golden bezel, um, like rose gold, uh, yellow gold, and stuff like that. You can have that. Um, the crown, I think, is also... The, um, gonna be gold then if you choose to get this option um not sure if i would really go for it honestly i'm pretty happy with this 
and uh, the completely blue watch is a little bit too blue for me. Uh, the black watch is a little bit too black for me because I don't really necessarily love black watches. Um, I, I like the occasional one, but I don't want my whole collection to be black watches. Uh, that would be a bit boring, honestly. Um, I am looking to get some more gold watches, honestly, because I have they've they've been growing on me, and um, so yeah, we're probably gonna see some of them on the channel in the future as well. So maybe some Omegas, uh, hopefully. One or two APs. You know how it is with AP at the moment. Not really likely that that's going to happen. I am on a list. The list is probably two kilometers long at least. So, yeah. And with with the few models that uh, AP produces in, in a larger amount every year, it's unlikely to see that, that I'm going to see that in the next couple of years. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, stuff can happen, and that's also a really cool thing. So, yeah, I honestly really think that this is a very, very cool watch. So if you want to get this watch, obviously do your research. But as far as I can tell, definitely something that I can uh, recommend. It does have a unidirectional bezel. Uh, I'm not going to turn that now because I really don't want to turn it all the way around. Uh, but just believe me, it does have that. And um, so, yeah, really cool watch, really cool unboxing, really hope you enjoyed it. Everything else that you might want to still know, write it in the comments below, I'll be more than happy to answer all of that. And uh, yeah, if you want to, you can also rate the video with either like a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you might want to do. And I would also really appreciate it if you could like subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos. So yeah, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a fantastic week and until next time.